Death doesn't have to be the end, not for some of God's creatures, because the animal kingdom is full of all manner of crazy little quirks. And yes, that does include animals that can live beyond their apparent demise. These are 20 animals that can live after death. Number 20. Snakes Cut the head off the snake and the body dies. That's the phrase that's used by many people to topple evil organizations or groups because the symbolic belief is that without its head, the rest will scatter like rats. Or in this case, a body can't live without the head. But at this point, we all know that that's not the case. In fact, snakes are one of the most infamous creatures for existing after it's dealt a mortal wound, which includes after having its head chopped off. There have been plenty of videos that show a snake having its head cut off, and then the body just wriggles around for a long time before slowly dying away. In other cases, someone cuts off the head and then provokes it in one way or another, and the snake head actually bites them. But how does that happen? Well, a snake's makeup is different from other animals, especially warm-blooded animals. They don't need as much oxygen to live, and so even when you cut off the head, the cells in the head don't die off immediately. They have plenty of life still left within them. So if you were to touch a snake's head a few moments after being cut off, off, it would still be very much alive, and alive enough to bite you and make you wish that you just left it alone. There have even been survival shows on places like the Discovery Channel where this has happened to the experts. So if it can happen to them, it can certainly happen to you. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Cockroaches This next one is a more down-to-earth story and one that many of you have had to deal with, no doubt. Cockroaches are the enemy of basically any homeowner because unlike ants, spiders, or even rats and mice, cockroaches are so dang hard to kill. You can step on them and they'll live, you can hit them with a newspaper, you can even drown them and they'll just get right back up. You can drop a nuclear bomb on them and they're going to survive the radiation. So why in the world are these things so hard to get rid of? Well, not so ironically, it has to deal with biology. Cockroaches have extremely strong and flexible exoskeletons, which make them almost impossible to squish. In fact, they're known for squishing their own bodies to fit into tight spaces. So they're already used to having their bodies in different forms. For some more context, cockroaches can actually withstand up to 900 times their own body weight, which is a lot. But what if you remove its head, you must ask? Well, I've already showed you one animal that can endure that, so why not two? Cockroaches can survive decapitation because they don't breathe through their mouths. Instead, they breathe via holes in their bodies. They'll die eventually from having their heads removed, but that's due to dehydration. Oh yeah, and the nuclear bomb part? Well, I'm not kidding on that one either. While they wouldn't survive the fiery blast, they can survive nuclear radiation due to how simple their bodies are in terms of muscle and tissue. It would take a dose far beyond what it would to kill a human just to take out one roach. These things are evil, they're pretty much indestructible, so if you find one and hit it, make sure that it's dead. Number 18. Octopus I'm going to be real specific here, because I don't want you to get the wrong idea about what's going on. When an octopus dies, it's dead. There's no way around that. Sometimes it'll actually fake a death, though, in order to lure in something, but it's still alive, obviously. The exception to this rule is not the octopus, but the octopus's tentacles. As you may know, if an octopus was to lose a tentacle, it can grow it back without a whole lot of issues. But what you might not know is that the tentacle will still be moving around without being connected to the main body. Ew! The reason for this has to do with the complex nerve system that the tentacles have. These arms can continue reacting to stimuli long after they've been connected to the main brain. In fact, they remain responsive even after the octopus has been euthanized and the arms have been severed. That's why you sometimes see octopus meals still wriggling around after they're cooked, because the arms are still capable of movement even after all of that. And that's also why you have to be careful when you eat them, especially if you're foolish enough to eat a live one. Yes, people do that. Why is it so dangerous? Well, that's because those arms can actually stick to your windpipe and then choke you and cause you not to breathe and then you're dead. And while the arm doesn't need to breathe, you absolutely do. The way that their arms work is so advanced, in fact, that some species actually will detach 
one of their own tentacles and use them as a weapon against their foes, so even they know that their tentacles are top tier in the limb department. Number 17. Salamanders While salamanders in the overall can't revive themselves from death, they do have a special ability that's captured the imagination of many. They can regrow their limbs. Not unlike the octopus I just talked about, salamanders have the gift of regeneration. The salamander's exceptional comeback from injury has been known for more than a century, and scientists have unraveled some of its secrets. It seals the amputation site with a special type of skin and then builds a bit of tissue from which it sprouts a new body part, a trick that obviously was granted to it over the course of millions of years of evolution, but it's still cool no matter what, especially since the new limb that's grown is just as functional as the limb that they lost. Some scientists say that it's almost like coming out of the womb again. What's more, for species like the axolotl, they can start their regeneration process almost instantly. Within hours, they're already growing that limb that they've just lost, and it may not be wolverine fast, but it's still a good pace. To that end, the question now becomes, can we replicate? this in humans? Well, that's something that many people are trying to achieve, and for various reasons, because if limb regeneration is done properly and can be replicated in other beings, the possibilities are endless. Imagine losing an arm due to an accident and having to overcome that disability for the rest of your life, or having to deal with a prosthetic. If this line of science works, you could have your arm regrown within a certain amount of time. Now, it would be freaky to watch happen, and likely wouldn't be painless, but it would help to fix many people, thus why many, many scientists are studying creatures like salamanders so they can learn from them. Number 16. Wood Frog Here's another thing that humanity would love to learn, because being cold really sucks. The shivering, the numbness, the desperation to be warm, the list just goes on. But for wood frogs, they literally bounce back after they freeze solid. Yes, these frogs live in areas where the temperature can get real low, and as a result, they overcome this by letting the cold actually take them, but not kill them. A chain of events occurs to protect the freezing frog. Minutes after ice begins to form on their skin, a wood frog's liver starts converting sugars, stored as glycogen, into glucose. This sugar is released from the liver and carried through the bloodstream to every tissue, where it then helps to keep cells from completely dehydrating and shrinking. As the wood frog is freezing, its heart continues pumping the protective glucose around its body, but the frog's heart slows and eventually stops. All other organs stop functioning, and by all rights, it should be dead. However, it's not. It is, in fact, still alive. In fact, the only thing that's going to kill it is if the temperature drops too low, because the body can only endure so much cold, or an outside party kills it while it's frozen. But then what happens when the warm weather returns? Well, that's when it goes into a reboot and repairs its body organ by organ until it hops around like nothing happened before. It's not only insane, but it's actually a superpower. It basically dies so that it can live later on. That's next level. In fact, many scientists are trying to mimic this superpower as well because of its potential in humans. But for now, the wood frogs have this ability, and we'll just have to endure the cold without it. Number 15. Turtles the next one is more about making sure the animal is dead rather than fully moving around dying, because when you think about it, a turtle is one of the most endurant animals in the world. Their shells are powerful and can withstand predators, and if you get the right species of turtle or tortoise, they can easily outlive humans, and equally as important, they move so slow that you sometimes don't even know what they're doing or not doing. So thus, trying to find out whether or not a turtle is dead is actually difficult, and even when they are dead, they can still move. The main reason behind turtles being able to keep their body parts moving after death is the way that they're built. It's a combination of their slow metabolic rate, high concentration of ions, and a heart that just keeps on beating without any signals from the brain. It's very freaky, and very much like a turtle, carrying on when it doesn't need to anymore. Turtles are known for their slow-paced life and extended mortality that could span up to centuries. However, with deforestation and concrete jungles being expanded, the chance for a wild turtle to stay alive for years has been gradually decreasing. So, making sure that your turtle is dead before you do anything with it is actually vital, especially since turtles and other similar species are known to do an act called brumation, where they very much appear dead but are very much still alive. One of the easiest ways to tell if your turtle is dead 
instead is to stimulate or even provoke it. Poke it constantly, pinch its tail, and see how it reacts, or if it reacts at all. Even in hibernation or brumation, they'll awaken when the right stimuli is there. Or you could just wait and see if it decomposes. You know, the smell is going to give it away. Number 14. Mike the Chicken now, I want to be clear about this topic before I get rolling into it, mainly in that these tales that I'm going to show you aren't always ones that feature creatures escaping death in basic ways. Some of the stuff is actually pretty freaky, which can be proven via this tale of Mike the Chicken. But what makes Mike so special? Well, that's because this chicken had its head chopped off and it lived for 18 months. No, it's not a joke. Here's a picture of a chicken to prove it. What happened was that the farmer, Lloyd Olson, and his wife, Clara, were trimming the herd, if you will, and this involved decapitating the chicken population. Lloyd would drop the hatchet and Clara would clean up the mess. Oh, how romantic. Except that after they chopped off the head of one of them, they noticed that it was still moving, not in that death twitch kind of way, but it was one where it was moving all over the place, kicking and running and doing normal stuff. It would be placed in an old apple box on the farm's screened-in porch for the night, and when Lloyd woke up the next morning, he stepped outside to see what had happened, and the bird was still alive. Even his great-grandson noted that this chicken was a weird part of the family history. Though it's not fully known why the chicken had lived, it was proven to be alive for the next 18 months, as Lloyd did a coast-to-coast -coast tour with the chicken. He made so much money off of that bird that he was able to improve the family farm, and he got to go places that he wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Number 13, Flatworm. Now we've all heard the line, you can't kill me from movies and television shows, but we know that's a lie. Even if a person is hard to kill, they can still die. It's just harder to do it and oftentimes very annoying. But with the flatworm, we may honestly have a creature that is straight up impossible to fully kill. For example, you may look at this worm and say, well, I'll just chop it in half. Well, go ahead. It's going to regenerate from both ends, and soon enough, you'll have not one worm, but two. Scientists believe that this all has to do with stem cells, a very popular topic amongst researchers and scientists. Flatworm stem cells are found all over the worm's body, but they do have to travel long distances in order to get to the wound. The stem cell is only about one micrometer in length and has to travel a distance of a thousand to ten thousand times greater than that. The cells do have to interpret differences in the wound signal, which is likely very weak over such a great distance, and yet stem cells still do manage to get there. After conducting research on flatworms, scientists are so confident in their regenerative ability that the only way to apparently kill one is to infect it with a disease or completely destroy it through means like incineration. Some even state that if one was left alone completely, it could actually live forever. Number 12, the immortal jellyfish. Here's another creature that's defied logic and science to reveal a certain immortal status. So emphatic is its ability to live that they literally dubbed it the immortal jellyfish, and for good reason. Reason number one is that the only way to kill it is through physical destruction, as in being eaten by a predator and brought to a stage where regeneration is not possible. Reason two, if it's not completely destroyed, or if it's just injured to a certain state, or it feels like it's about to die from something like starvation, that's when it gets to work. Work. In this case, work is literally rewinding the biological clock so that it can go to an immature state, not like how people get immature and tell each other off. It goes to a previous state in its life and then lives it out again. So basically, it's like if you were an elderly person and right before you died, you reverted back to being a teenager. You'd have all of your knowledge, but your body would be young and you could live your life once again. That's what this jellyfish species does over and over and over during the course of its life. No one understands how it fully does this, or what allowed it to evolve to such a state, but needless to say, scientists are studying it vigorously because they truly feel that this creature could be the key to immortal life. After all, barring outside forces, there's no reason to think that it can't live forever. Number 11, Tardigrades. Now, I've shown you animals of all sizes that can come back from death or near death with ease, but now let's get to the microscopic element and talk about a creature that can endure pretty much anything that the wild can throw at it. This is the tale of the tardigrade. Tardigrades are famed amongst biologists for their ability to survive conditions that would kill almost any other animal, which includes being dehydrated, launched into space, and even crashed into the moon. After all that, they're still alive. Despite their tiny size, they're complex animals, built 
result of maybe a thousand cells, but they're equally as complex as a cockroach or even a fruit fly. And you've already seen how cockroaches will survive anything. Tardigrades are so capable that they can actually survive multiple states without batting an eye. Dry them out completely? Well, they'll still live. Biologists did that for the moon ones that I just spoke about. They can also be frozen to near absolute zero without any issues, and can also be put in boiling water without fail or fear. They can survive thousands of times as much radiation as we can, and even endure the vacuum of space. Going back to that dehydration state, that's called their inactive state, and they're so good at surviving that they can actually survive as shriveled up husks for years, and then be given water and pop right back up like it's nothing. You just can't kill these things without an extreme amount of effort. Number 10. Lungfish there are many animals in the world today that are known as living fossils, and these are beings that have outlived everything from prehistoric times despite being there themselves. That's more than just having a survival instinct, that's being able to endure extinction level events. And for the lungfish, they do this with an ability called estivation. Now, this is a variation on hibernation where the lungfish will actually bury itself in the ground and use a special mucus cocoon to protect itself when it goes dormant. And when it does go dormant, it can survive in that cocoon for quite a long time. It'll even eat its own muscle tissues in order to get the nutrients that it needs to endure for however long it has to go. This creature has lived on the earth for an estimated 400 million years, and death is not something that just happens to the lungfish. Number 9. Flies now I'm going to talk about one of the most annoying creatures on the planet. Seriously, these things are so annoying, but I don't need to tell you that. You've had to endure them yourselves over the years. Here's where the twist comes in. Flies are easy to kill in the physical way, especially if you have a fly swatter or a flip-flop, but they have a short lifespan. They can endure quite a bit in the nature sense if allowed. Flies can survive freezing temperatures and go into suspended animation. You can freeze them for days without giving them any heat, and they'll simply come back as normal. Also, the females, they'll live for several days after they've been decapitated. Such beheading females assume an upright stance comparable to that of a normal fly, and can engage in complex actions like preening and flying. It's weird, and now I hate them even more. Number 8. Praying Mantis this one is pretty crazy, so just roll with me on it. The praying mantis is one of several species of the world that have a particular form of cannibalism that they partake in. In this case, they eat their mates after they're done with them, if you get my drift. This is very horrifying, and you'd swear that males are definitely dead, and they are. However, their remains live on in a different way. <laughs> Scientists have found out that when it comes to the females eating the males after that special cuddle, the remains of the males that are eaten don't immediately get digested by the female's body. Instead, they're used to help ensure that more eggs are laid by the female. So while the male is gone, his contribution to the cause lives on in the next generation in more ways than one. Number 7. Fruit Flies not to be confused with the flies that I talked about earlier, fruit flies are another example of an annoying pest living far longer than it should under lethal circumstances. First off, just trying to hit them is a challenge because their vision will see you coming, and then you'll have to deal with the fact that they're in the air and they can literally turn on a dime to avoid you. Like other flies, they can survive being frozen and they can even survive being baked in a microwave. But that's not all. As an episode of Mythbusters would prove, fruit flies are actually more capable of surviving nuclear radiation than cockroaches, further showing how they just will never die. So if you do get an infestation of them in your home, well, good luck with that. Number 6. Squids now this may surprise you because of the term fish out of water, because squids are an aquatic species, and you would think that without water they would die near instantly. However, that's not the case at all. Instead, certain species of squids will willingly go out onto land and can actually last for up to about 30 minutes without breathing in its own way. Of course, the catch with this, they have to ensure that they get back into the water before they literally dry out, and some don't, which shows why it's a risky maneuver to begin with. I just don't understand why they're on this list. Number 5. The Hydra 
The microscopic organisms known as the hydra are very small, only about 30 millimeters long when stretched out, but it has a way to not only live but also thrive, especially when it comes to the green hydra, which is a being that has algae within it. When it's dehydrated and thus deprived of oxygen, it can actually live on because the algae that's inside of it provides all of the oxygen it needs. I guess it just doesn't mind needing a little help in order to live. Number four, humans. Are you surprised? Well, we're animals too, you know. And humanity can teach animals all sorts of things in terms of dramatic survival stories. There are people who push the human body to insane limits and avoid death as a result, which includes Wim Hof, who has used meditation and focus and focused breathing in order to survive the hottest and coldest of temperatures. What's more, you've all likely heard stories of people who were declared dead and then shot back up to life right after. It's a freaky thing, but it does happen. Yet Yes, humans are fragile creatures and we break all the time, however we have it within us to survive incredible things when the right situation is present. And to be clear, I don't want you all to go and do various acts that will get you killed, but do take to heart that humanity has survived a lot and will continue to survive a lot in the future. Number 3. Wolf Eel the wolf eel is one of many creatures out there in the world right now who is struggling to survive, mainly because mankind and vicious predators keep chipping away at their numbers. Whether it be through natural courses or getting caught in fishermen's nets, it's hurting the population on a grand scale. So how is it that they aren't all dead yet? Well, part of it is because of conservation efforts, of which we should all be grateful. The other aspect is that they do spawn a lot of eggs. A single female wolf eel will create 10,000 eggs in a mating season. Just one wolf eel does that alone. Now sure, many of them get eaten up by predators, but having one or two or even ten of them is enough to create a whole population if they're fortunate enough. The population of the wolf eels are stable now, and hopefully it stays that way for the future. Number 2. Lobsters now, this is probably going to make you hungry, and with this one, I'm sorry. Well, mostly. You might have heard the rumor that lobsters are immortal. To the best of scientific knowledge, that's not actually the case. However, they are one of the select group of animals in the world right now that can outgrow just about everyone else if left alone. You see, lobsters have a special trait via molting. They'll ditch parts of their shell and grow a new one because they just keep on growing. Their molting phase never passes until they die. That means they're going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing until their lives come to an end. Hence why some thought that they were immortal, because they could just grow forever, right? Well, not exactly. However, they can reach up to 100 years in age, and it's kind of hard to tell if that's the high point of their lifespan or just what we can calculate on our own. Number 1. Bees the last one is a public service announcement for all of you. Bees are vital to our world's biological survival, but they can still very much be annoying and sting you and whatnot. In fact, they can even do all that after death. Because you might recall that certain bee species die after they do sting you. Not all do, but many can, and you might come across a dead bee and think that it's safe to pick it up because clearly it's not going to hurt you. Except that bees' actions are not controlled by the bee's brain, but rather by involuntary impulses. And so if you do pick up a dead bee that still has its stinger, you still have the chance of being stung. So the smart thing to do, just don't touch it. And that's all from the realm of animals that have somehow escaped certain death. Were you weirded out by some of these stories that I shared with you today? And which of them did you find the most disturbing? Are there others that should be on this list? And have you ever come back after death? Let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.